Order. I'd like to call the Tuesday, May 19, 2020, Oldsmar City Council meeting to order. Uh, before we continue on in the agenda, let me just uh, remind everyone due to COVID-19 and an executive order by the governor and I, uh, we are meeting by video. All votes will be taken by roll call. Citizens have been provided the opportunity to participate in tonight's meeting by appearing at the city council chambers where we've established safe social distancing protocols. Uh, the city uh, has a webcam set up there and our assistant city manager is there to assist anyone uh, from the public who wishes to make a comment under the citizens open quorum form uh, or uh, participate in the public hearing we have it under item number eight. We've also invited citizens to submit comments in writing to the city clerk if they wish to have something read into the public record. Uh, next two items on the agenda are our invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by our city attorney, Mr. Tom Trask. Heavenly Father, we are gathered today with members of our community with the shared belief that we must treat each other with dignity and respect. In this invocation, I don't ask you to bow your heads, but to look up at what you can accomplish by working together. I don't ask you to close your eyes, but to keep them open wide to the problems that we face as a city. With your talents and insight, you can lead this community to a better future. As you work together on behalf of all who live in this city, may you draw strength and encouragement from one another through compassion and reason. This we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Mayor. All right, first, uh, next item on the agenda is the Citizens Open Forum. I'm going to ask our uh, Assistant City Manager if we have anybody at our chambers who wishes to speak. I, I do have someone here. Mr. Paco Abram is here. Would you like to speak? Um, I'm not sure. Mostly I wanted to listen, thinking there'd be a, an update discussion on this. COVID-19 openings or closings. He doesn't want to speak. So All right, well, tell him we said welcome. I welcome. feel like I know him. We've, we've messaged back and forth multiple times. Okay. So so he's welcome to be here. All right. Uh, and do you have anything for the public record? I have not received any comments. All right, thank you. Next item on the agenda, uh, a community minute, which will be presented by our city clerk, Ann Nixon. Uh, well, as you know, the Memorial Day ceremony is canceled due to the pandemic. A wreath will be placed to continue to honor the day. And you can check out the Bay Pines Veteran, Veterans Administration Facebook, 10 o'clock a.m. on Monday the 25th. They're gonna do a virtual ceremony. Uh, they have Memorial Day spirit signs. You can show your support for Memorial Day with special yard signs. Speed Pro Imaging is selling inspirational yard signs to promote our city spirit. Speed Pro is giving Project Pop Drop 25% of the sales from the signs, and then Pop Drop in turn is giving all the proceeds to Oldsmar Cares. You have until this Thursday to get your order in. The signs will keep giving. You can use them on July 4th, Purple Heart Day, Veterans Day, and Pearl Harbor Day. Any day is a good day to celebrate veterans. To order, call Speed Pro 813-891-9400. Pop Drop is also doing its an fifth annual Food and Toilet to Drive. I'm coordinated. They're coordinating for the month of June and benefiting Old Smart Cares. The drop will be on June 27th. They're gonna have 40 pop drop collection boxes when they'll be distributed at businesses throughout the greater Oldsmar area for the month of June. Just when, as as, when you see a box, drop some stuff in and then they'll be picking them up on June 27th and delivering them. There'll also be a truck placed at the Walmart on Saturday, Walmart and Oldsmar on Saturday, June 20th. And the drive is the largest donation Oldsmar Cares receives all year long. And the last but not least, We've got some great news on library services. So the book returns are open and the library has started curbside pickup today. If the catalog says they have an item available, you can call 813-749-1173 or email information at oldsmarlibrary.org. Library staff will pull the requested item from the shelf and check it out for you. And then they'll contact you to schedule a pickup time and staff will bring it outside to you. But you want to kind of keep your request down to maybe five items or less because there's some pretty busy people over there. That's all I have. All right, excellent. Uh, next item on the agenda, approval of additional new agenda items. We have item two and number uh, five as new items. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. 
So moved. Do I have a, a, a motion? Uh, Council Member Gannon, seconded by Vice Mayor Norris. Uh, any discussion? Sensing none. A roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris. Oh, Vice Mayor Norris, you're muted. Yes, sorry. Council Member Siraki? Yes. Council Member Knapp? Yes. Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Approval of additional new agenda items passed us with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Uh, awards and recognition, recognition section, as well as community redevelopment agency section of our agenda. We have nothing tonight, so I'll move on to the consent docket, which will be announced by our city clerk, Ann Nixon. Item one, accept resignation of Jerry Walters from the Veterans Advisory Board and Board of Adjustment. Item two, accept resignation of John Carroll from the Board of Adjustment. Item three, approve payment to legal counsel for April 2020 legal services. And item four, approve minutes of the May 5th, 2020 council meeting. All right, the chair would like to pull items one and two. Uh, would anybody like to pull anything else? Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to accept items three and four. So moved. So moved. So Second. moved by the mayor, seconded by uh, council member Siraki. Uh, Sense you're ready to vote. Roll call. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Council Member Siraki? Yes. Council Member Knapp? Yes. Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Items three and four of the consent docket are approved with five votes for and zero against. Okay, the chair will enter entertain a motion for the purpose of discussion to accept items one and two. So moved. So, moved. so I have a uh, motion from uh, Council Member Gannon and seconded by Council Member Knapp. Uh, I just wanted to comment. I think probably everybody else uh, does as well. You know, John Carroll's done a really good job for us on the Board of Adjustments. I think you all saw the letter he sent, which I thought was very nice, uh, very well thought out. Of course, he's moving away. And uh, so he'll be missed, and we want to publicly thank him for his service uh, to the city and uh, wish him well in his new endeavors. And we hope uh, some of you might recall in his letter, he talked about maybe dropping back in and, and, and saying goodbye more formally. And we certainly would welcome him to do that, but uh, we thank him for his service uh, to the city. And then of course, Jerry Walters, who's been a mainstay in the city for so many, so many years. Uh, you know, I, I remember when I very first got involved in the Oldsmar City Council, one of the first persons that I, I met was probably Jerry. And I think he was at city council meeting, every city council meeting I went to, uh, to, to make sure he uh, set Beaverland straight or Ronecker straight or, you know, whoever. And, uh, but his service to the Veterans Advisory Board and Board of Adjustments uh, goes a long way back. Uh, we served together on the Board of Adjustments. And so he certainly uh, will be missed. And uh, I hope he takes it a little easier because he's always busy doing something. So uh, anyhow, I want to make a point of saying that. Any other comments? Only to echo yours, Mr. Mayor. Well said. Thanks. Thanks. I second that, Mayor. All right. All right, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Council Member Sarecki? Yes. Council Member Knapp? Yes. Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Items one and two, the consent docket are approved with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, item number five, presentation of economic recovery plan by Mayor Seidel's COVID-19 Economic Recovery Task Force. And so I'm gonna turn this over, I think, to Felicia who's leading this. And I'm not sure who's presenting completely, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll comment on the end about the amount of work and time people put into the committee. And uh, I think uh, Felicia circulated the report yesterday or today, I can't remember which, which day it was. So, uh, but we thank all of the committee members who were able to make it tonight. It's nice to have some new faces on here and they worked hard on this. And so with that, I'll turn it over to our assistant city manager. Hi, good evening council. I would like to turn this over directly to Sandy Grimes, the co-chair of the committee. Well, I could have done that. <laughs> I didn't have a cue card. Thank you, Mayor Seidel and Council for having us this evening. Um, we want to give you a brief history and then we're going to go through our PowerPoint, which Felicia is going to share with you on your screens um, and basically present what we have done over the past few months. 
In late March, Mayor Seidel reached out to me with an idea of creating a recovery task force. Of course, no one tells no to Mayor Seidel, so of course the wheels were in motion at that point. His vision was to create a committee that would develop a recovery plan in conjunction with the city to identify needs and assist our business community with economic strategies. The task force held its first meeting on April 2nd, and we have had a meeting each week since that date. Next, Felicia. Next. Oh, I'm sorry. The task force was made up of business community stakeholders represented, representing insurance, manufacturing, banking, restaurants, technology, and of course, government. I won't go through each of us individually, but these are the key partners that um, put together our task recovery team. Next. Initially, we felt that we needed a mission statement and our mission statement was to create a recovery plan in coordination with the city of Oldsmar that will identify needs and assist our business community with economic stra recovery strategies. And this plan will be reviewed and updated in response to changing conditions. However, as we progressed through this process over the past few weeks, months, I should say, um, we determined that we needed a vision statement. And our vision statement was, Oldsmar is a community where strategic mitigation efforts are implemented to minimize the negative effects of COVID-19 and where a fully recovered economy will thrive. Next. The second stage of the methodology was the discovery phase. That included two main parts. The first was a task force SWOT analysis and the second was a business telephone survey. The task force SWOT analysis was completed by each task force member and they viewed it through the lens of their industry. So some of the strengths that they identified were that Oldsmar has the ability to respond to a changing environment. We have a very philanthropic mindset. Weaknesses included, of course, the loss of income, dis disruption of business as we know it today, supply chain disruption. Opportunities included move businesses back to made in America, increased local jobs, sharing resources such as facility space, supplies, or PPE. We have a very well-connected community. And some of the threats were, you know, an economic recession, loss of tax revenue. When will customers actually feel safe to return? A business telephone survey was conducted and completed by city employees. The city employees attempted to contact 717 businesses during the survey period. 343 of the 717 were successfully contacted, while 222 completed a majority of the survey. So that gave us a 48% engagement rate with a 31% completion rate. Some of the main summary points that were collected were more than half of the businesses contacted responded to the calls while about a third gave detailed responses. The industries of construction, accommodation and food, finance and insurance provided the most responses. 74% of the businesses remain open in some capacity 76 of open businesses reported decreased income, but that means the other portion either had a steady income or we ran across people who actually had an increase in business at this time. We had zero businesses reported that they expected to permanently close during, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That was pretty big. 53% of the businesses do not have additional PPE provided for their employees. I think it's important to note with the survey responses that this only represents the people that we were able to contact. It doesn't represent the people that we weren't. That may have already been closed. Next. 
After we examined the discovery information, the task force created five main strategies for recovery. Those included strategies in communication, financial assistance, technical assistance, marketing and promotion, and business-friendly city policy. Next. For communication, we realized that when there is a constant flow of evolving information during a crisis, it is vital to ensure that there are multiple methods of communication to keep everyone up to date with accurate and current information. During this COVID-19 pandemic, the City of Oldsmar, Pinellas County, and the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce quickly implemented several methods to communicate to the business community. We had a city web page that specifically had COVID-19 resources listed on the web page. The city of Oldsmar staff personally placed telephone calls to Oldsmar businesses. Currently 222 businesses receive personal phone calls from the city. The city manager sends out a weekly e-newsletter that has information not only about what's going on in the community, but about current directives, important notices, and upcoming programs. The city of Oldsmar and the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber consistently post essential messages on multiple social media accounts, including Facebook and Nextdoor and alert Pinellas notifications have gone out to over 7,500 Oldsmar subscribers and 1,387 Oldsmar business subscribers. And this sends notification, either email, text, or phone so that we can inform people in case of emergencies and essential information. The Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce has really been a hub of information They've hosted virtual lunch and learns, virtual coffee talks, virtual meetings with industries in order to keep the communication flowing during this pandemic. And then finally, Pinellas County also has online resources. They have a comprehensive website that has current opportunities at federal, state, and local levels. The task force recommends continuation of each of these specific communication strategies for the remainder of 2020 to ensure that everyone is on the same page and notified. Next slide. Financial assistance was one of the categories of strategies that the committee, that the task force discussed. And so during um, the last couple of months, we saw an uptick in the existing um, local financial programs that were offered. So um, Pinellas County Cares Small Business Grants offers grants for up to $5,000 to small businesses to cover expenses such as employee wages, vendor bills, and mortgage and rent costs. Pinellas Cares Individual Grants, while this may not seem um, relevant to a uh, business economic recovery plan, it's important for the business community to know that the individual grants are available for their employees. And then um, Pinellas County Cares also has a nonprofit and community organization assistance um, to directly um, subsidize and help those um, nonprofits and community organizations that directly serve um, people of impact through um, COVID-19. The task force also, through the financial assistance category, has recommended um, a few more financial assistance programs to be considered. Um, the first program is a landlord commercial rental assistance program. Through the discovery process, um, it was found that uh, there, are, there are several people that, um, from a commercial side that aren't receiving revenue due to deferred rent. And so the task force felt like it could be a model that um, mirrored the Pinellas County CARES small business grant models where you'd have to have proof of a commercial lease, where you'd have to be open for business, where you'd have to show a profit and loss information statement to substantiate lost revenue, and that the formula could be created to give the assistance to the small businesses who've lost rental revenue due to COVID-19. Another program that the task force is recommending is the consideration of a 501c6 assistance program, 
So the Pinellas County CARES grant um, offers assistance to nonprofits and community organizations that directly benefit, um, but 501c6s are not included in that category. And a 501c6 is an organization that supports businesses such as a Chamber of Commerce. So the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce has a large supporting role in um, offering guidance to our community. So the task force thought that this was a, um, a gap in what the programs were providing at the county level. Another um, unfunded financial assistance program is a personal protective equipment support. And so there um, is another program, I think it's in Utah, that the committee looked at that offers, the, the city offers PPE, P, PPE packs to businesses to help them get ready. Really, it's a direct offset to a business expense for opening up. This was voiced by um, several people in the interviews about the cost of actually getting your business back and running. So it would be a PPE grant support where the PPE would be supplied by the city of Oldsmar. Next. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to help out in these trying times. Uh, I can tell you, I got the technical assistance part of it, and it's ever more important than, than ever before. Uh, Osmar stepped up, and they, they've got an Osmar assistance hotline to help uh, businesses and individuals with emergency loans, grants, help locate personal financial resources, unemployment, and other assistance, find food resources. Very, very much needed. Uh, technical Expertise Resources Group, uh, we're putting together a round table of, uh, we felt that the businesses here have to help each other, and we're trying to figure out who it is that, that's at the top of this chain, and we, we're thinking it's the banks. So we're putting in one room, in a round table, the city and, and the chamber, we're gonna get bankers, accountants, a legal, a lawyer, an insurance company, and a commercial real estate management. If they can help each other, they can help the small businesses survive. Uh, industry working groups. We did this uh, just before the restaurants opened up. We had a restaurant group on, on Zoom and talked about, you know, what they what their plan was. That was the biggest thing. We wanted to make sure everybody had a plan. Did they know what 25% of their occupancy was? Did they know what they could and couldn't do? Uh, we talked about how you're gonna how you're gonna approach this from a standpoint of people's perception. And uh, next tomorrow, actually, we're having one with the hotels to talk about what the hotels have to do uh, to get ready for opening up uh, industry working groups. Pinellas County Small Business Development Center, we've at the chamber here, we've had Kurt, Kurt Forrester come in here for the past several years. He's a small business development counselor and he'll talk to any business that comes in here about business and marketing plan templates, financial techni te technical, financial technical, government contracting, Workforce development programs and navigating government permitting and licensing. And uh, I'm sure more than ever, that's important. Also, also Osmar Oak, Osmar Works, uh, helps with job assistance, resume building, training opportunities, employment resources, and emotional encouragement. Next. Marketing and promotion. Uh, as you heard, the city made a lot of phone calls. We did that jointly with them. We called all of our members to include non-members and worked with the city to find out who was open and who wasn't open and started making a list of, of uh, what they were doing, if they were open, uh, I'm gonna pick on the restaurants because that's the easiest. You know, were they doing takeout? Uh, were they doing delivery and all that kind of stuff? Were they open, what their hours were? And uh, very well received on both ends. I know Felicia got good comments and we did on our end too but we tried to keep that open and let everybody know. And that was an ever changing list. It almost changed daily because somebody didn't open right away and then would open in two days uh, to try and survive. Community-wide business supporting marketing campaign. Uh, we're doing a My Chamber TV. And again, we're gonna do that. Uh, usually we do it just with single businesses. We're gonna do it with a panel, uh, different businesses together and, and just do a round table with them. Uh, we do a Zoom. Every Wednesday, it's a lunch and learn. And uh, the business blitz, this came from Utah. And what they did is they put signs up in a park and people would drive by and it's, you can see it on your slide. The businesses would have a slide up that this, the city took care of. They would offer uh, deals, 
coupons and stuff like that. And people just have to take a picture of them. Well, we know here in Oldsmar, that's going to be a little tough driving on Tampa Road and stopping and taking pictures. So last year at Christmas time, we had a uh, scavenger hunt just for the month of uh, November and December. It went, went very well. So we're going to take this idea, I think, to the scavenger hunt. We're going to open it up probably in two weeks and we'll take it right through December because again, that's going to be ever changing. There's going to be a business that might not be open this week that will open up next week. So we're going to keep adding those businesses, keep adding deals and, and coupons and stuff. So people, we get the people to go into their business and, and visit them. Thank you. Next. And the final strategy that we want to talk about is business friendly city policies. Um, the city of Oldsmar has been very proactive with Mayor Seidel is issuing executive orders that have been very proactive about businesses, such as Executive Order 2020-19, which allowed outdoor seating expansion, 2020-02, which suspended utility shutoffs for non-payment, 2020-03, which continued the waiver of fees associated with city electronic payments, and the task force recommends that these executive orders be continued until the state of emergency is, order, is over. We also would like to propose no proactive enforcement of the sign ordinance so that businesses can publish their openings, their specials, different things like that without having to worry about their signs being taken down or being fined for having signs that maybe don't conform to what the city rules are. We feel like this would be a great way for, for businesses to be able to advertise what they're doing without having to worry about the cost of that advertisement. Um, so we recommend that that be allowed to happen um, until this pandemic has eased or until later this summer, depending on how that goes. Next slide. So that really concludes our presentation that gives you the five groups of strategies that we wanted to talk about today. Thank you very much for your time and for allowing us the opportunity to present these to you. We want to say that we will be reevaluating our recommendations because these are based on current conditions. And obviously the situation is evolving and conditions are changing rapidly. So we will be looking at our recommendations and we will be updating these in 90 days or sooner if it's necessary to ensure relevancy. Can we answer any questions at this time? Thank you. Does anybody on the council have any specific questions? Let me also recognize Robin Reynolds who uh, was a co-chair along with Sandy. And uh, let's see, we've got Amy on the phone from Nielsen, who also served on the committee, and Michelle, and uh, who served on the committee, and Scott, and of course, Jerry Peruzzi, who uh, served on the committee. I'm looking around to see if I'm missing anybody who happens to be here. Alicia? I, let, me, let me do this. Let me uh, just open it up uh, to the floor. Uh, any questions any council member has or any comments they wish to make? Uh, council member gannon first i just wanted to thank every member of the committee for this excellent report and all of the work you've done thank you so much for synthesizing this into a very short presentation that is very packed full of information i just had one question and it's just a to see if there was any consensus among the committee uh, as to what of the proposed um, recovery strategies, the ones that are specifically marked proposed and not yet implemented, what might be the most effective or the most helpful for Oldsmar businesses. If there is a consensus as to one or more, I was just curious. Um, I really don't, I mean, I don't feel that there was one that had any higher priority. We felt all of them were, you know, important in their own weight. And um, it, it's, it's really difficult at this point to make a decision, say this one would be better than another. I think again, as we revisit and we gather back again, you know, we'll be able to kind of dial into that a little more. Any other? Council Member Siraki. Thank you, Mayor. I have one question, but first of all, I just want to say that the presentation was excellent. Thank you for all your hard work, Mayor, being the leader on this. 
Uh, it's so important for our city and our community. I just want to say thank you to all of you. I have one question. Robin, you mentioned that the hotels are not open. Is that so they're not open yet? Uh, I talked about the hotels and yes, they're open, but we want to make sure you're all on the same page and know what the guidelines are. Okay, that, that's what I wanted to find out. Thank you, Jerry. You're welcome. Uh, question, Vice Mayor. Again, same thing. Everybody did a great job. It's very complete and comprehensive, and it's so Sorry. nice that you hit so many points that I, I own a business, and I wouldn't even have thought of all this. A um, couple questions. One, I know that the limit for the small business grants are from one to 25 employees. With the proposed um, assistance at the end that y'all came up with, um, are you also including businesses that don't have a commercial storefront or are they still just businesses with commercial storefronts that like, for instance, the, PP, the PPE, I know people are going to love that because some businesses, they just can't find it. They can't, they don't, you know, they don't know where to get it. It's all sold out or it's too expensive. So I guess the question would be, are you also considering non-commercial front businesses in the assistance recommendations at the end of the at the end of your presentation yes we, you know robin do you want to go ahead and answer that one or i mean i think the intent is for us to help as many businesses as possible so if there are businesses that are not being reached by existing pro programs those are the businesses that we want to try to help with some of our unfunded proposals Okay, great, because there's businesses that are falling through the cracks and they're the ones that need the help the most. They can't get the PPP, they can't get the PPE, they can't get the small business grant, they can't, you know, so that makes me happy. Um, let's see. What, Jerry Peruzzi, I have a question for you. Scavenger hunt, what is a scavenger hunt? Felicia, what is a scavenger hunt? <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, we, we lost the connection. We were breaking up for a minute. We huh? lost the connection. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, thought, I, you were I thought you were taking a nap, Jerry. <laughs> I'm, just oh, I would. I'm just curious. I, I, I'm not familiar with the, this idea of the scavenger hunt, so I just wanted to know what that was. Last time, we had 75 businesses that were included in this. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay. We had 75 businesses that were included in this and we put a sign in each business that had our chamber logo on it and the people bought passports and in the passport was all the businesses and the more businesses, oh. the more businesses that they went to visit, the more they got included in the prize list, which those businesses added up to, but this gave the businesses a chance for people just to come in and find out what they were all about. And so we're thinking that we can probably make this bigger now since we're going to do it for probably four or five months and add more businesses, anybody who wants to be involved in it. We don't care if they're a chamber member or not, but all we're trying to do is drive people to their business. Wonderful, that's a great idea. Thank you very much, thanks all, that's it. And Linda, uh, if anybody's having trouble getting PPE, please have them contact us. Okay, I will, yeah, thank you. That's a, thank you, Vice Mayor, Council Member Knapp. Thank you, Mayor, uh, I just had a couple questions. Uh, the first one being, um, after this report now, which is great, like what's next moving forward with the task force? Will you still be meeting more or less on a weekly basis or is it kind of uh, wait and see what we do as a council and city on our end? Let, let, me, let, let me kind of take that for just a minute if I can. And I'm gonna kind of like go into that. If you have some other questions, by all means, fire away. Well, no, the second one was kind of then to throw it back to you and, and, <laughs> and, and uh, take it from there. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, let me, uh, I, I've got a few comments. And, you know, from an overall uh, perspective of receiving the report, right? The goal from my perspective was to put some smart people thinking about a lot of different things from different sectors, right? Uh, because uh, we all have our strengths and, and have our experiences. And um, the, the challenge becomes uh for had become i think in some ways for the committee and and you know frankly for us as a city 
And that is things move so quickly. They're so fluid. Um, you know, at the time in which we're talking about people falling behind on their rent with the landlord, uh, with their landlords and how it's impacting the commercial properties here, which is not something you hear discussed very often. By the time there's a meeting, by the time it's put together, by the time we discuss it with council, businesses are open back up, right? I mean, it's been that kind of fluidness uh, with almost every issue that you can imagine that we talk about. And so in terms of solutions and takeaways, actionable items for this council to consider, it makes it difficult because it is moving pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Um, and so that being said, as it relates to funding, you know, as, as some of you may know, we do have some emergency funding that we have uh, set aside um, for emergency orders, that type of thing. We've, we've elected not to use any of that at this time, of course, because in about two weeks, it's hurricane season, right? And so there's always that kind of management of resources. But to me, the other part of that is knowing where there's the obvious gaps that we should consider putting money in. And frankly, do we have enough money where it has much of an impact to move the needle? And, and that probably becomes the bigger issue, not to mention there are certainly some issues related to the use of Avalor money uh, as it relates to grants and that type of thing. And so those are issues that clearly would have to be vetted. But I believe there are some takeaways that we can uh, uh, work on. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we talk about the PPEs, for example, um, you know, we're at a strange spot right now because a lot of businesses from the time we originally did the survey to now have solved their own problems. Do you know what I mean by that? That's what I mean by things being very fluid. And so, you know, I hope there is a never, uh, never another time. But in as much as I think we glean a lot out of the activities and the work from this committee um, right now, I think it's probably something that becomes a real blueprint uh, for future events. Um, there are many who feel like we'll have future events. I'm personally not one of them um, because I'm going to walk around with bubble wrap on. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> But it, it becomes something that's so unprecedented that now it's not, but now we have some tools there. Like I, I would predict that this council may want to consider uh, maybe in another month or now, we talk about stocking up on PPEs, right? And so maybe that's a time when we think about it and say, look, if there's a second wave that comes, as many do feel there will be, Maybe in between this gap, we make the decision to spend some money to stock up with it in mind that we're going to also make it available to our businesses, right? Because right now, I think most people on the short term have probably solved that problem. Uh, there might be some exceptions to it, and in which case, maybe it's a matter of putting them together with the source, not necessarily paying for it for them. But these are the types of things that I think the value of this committee's uh, uh, feedback that we can, it can be actionable for our city long term, if that makes sense, right? I do think there are things like um, continuing to keep the communications up. The committee identified what a key point that's been to be effective as a strategy to know what's the status of our city, knowing what percentage of our, or not percentage, but at least I don't know that it's completely, well, it is statistically valid because of the number of people we actually connected with, right? But knowing that, okay, this is something we should be doing. It's a strategy to find out what's going on. And there's another part to this, like the landlord assistance program and the nonprofits for 501-06s, uh, right? You know, the county received, um, I believe the final number was $170 million uh, for programs that specific that have to go to uh, having an impact on those impacted with COVID-19. 
And so that includes businesses. And as, you know, as, as you heard in the presentation, I think everybody already you know, knows about these programs, about the $5,000 grant, about the grant uh, program for individual households. And you know, some might feel that some of the household thresholds on income were set too low because that program has not had the amount of impact I think that the county administrator would have liked to see. Uh, he, he, he mentioned that today. And so they're doing accounting right now to figure out how much money they have left. That, those two programs were only spending about 65 million of the 170. So there will be other programs, right? So now part of when we look at a program, program like Landlord Assistance Program um, in the, uh, and for the 50106s, uh, this is a program where there is funds allocated in the Care Relief Act uh, that have filtered to our county that we should be lobbying for these new programs and what they're going to what they're calling as the um, a round two, I guess is what he was calling it today, of programs that are going to be designed to distribute these funds. And so here's a place where we can go, look, uh, we've had a task force work on this. Here's some of the legwork and research. We think this is a good place for the county to allocate some money as, uh, you know, it's an unfunded idea, uh, but it's a need. And so we don't necessarily have to think just what can the city fund, but rather where can we find funds and where can we go be part of that proactively. And, and for me, uh, and I, I think there's a ton of value that comes out of this committee and the credibility of the committee, frankly, uh, brings it more than just, you know, here's the mayor saying A, B, C, or D, or one of our council members who are talking to uh, one of the commissioners. And, and so that we go and, and, and take the takeaway from this, uh, even though there are items, like I said, that are non-funded, that wasn't the task. The task was what's the best, identify where they think there might be gaps and recommend them. And regardless if there's money to fund it or not, because then it becomes our job to try to go help see those programs get created so they have an impact as intended, all right? And so uh, the technical assistance uh, and the uh, technical expertise resource group, you know, here's another prime example of uh, where our chamber partnership is critical. And so, you know, I had a conversation with Commissioner Eggerts the other day and I mentioned to him, you know, look, you can use your chamber for uh, a tool to help recover, right? And, and certainly, um, you know, Pinellas Economic Development, they have a lot of programs as well. Uh, but this might be something that is executed on the very local level by their local chamber. Uh, and, and so once again, it, to me, it kind of feeds back to, um, you know, the 50106 uh, possible funding that was left out of any, any possible grants, or quite candidly, when we're talking at budget, uh, you know, we have the ability to, out, to, to do an appropriations uh, of more money to the chamber. And if we're going to task them to do these things as part of one of our tools, that's something that's worth having a discussion about with this council, right? And so for me, I think the smart thing to do, um, I, I think the uh, Made in America campaign, right? Let's, you know, buy an Oldsmar campaign. Uh, you know, that it, to me is something that we could get behind and start hammering that. Uh, and maybe we, you know, uh, maybe uh, we, we have staff come up with some marketing material that we can utilize and uh, start talking that up. And maybe we start, you know, putting out logos, uh, buying Oldsmar, uh, that type of thing. And so here's what I'm going to suggest we do for this report. And uh, here's what I'm going to suggest. We do. I'm, I'm going to suggest that we accept the report. You know, there's no action that we take in it. But I also would say this, I think we're gonna have, we're gonna talk about our planning session very soon. It's later in the agenda. I think maybe 
because we're going to do kind of, I'm going to, we'll see where we come out on that. But, um, you know, that might be a place because that's going to be uh, relatively soon where we can look at some of these recommendations. We can do our plan uh, for the year and it gives us probably another, whenever we decide to do it, which, you know, it's going to be, uh, my, my suggestion is going to be we do it next month in June, right? Um, it gives us some time between here and there to see where we're at with what's reopened and what's still hurting. Because things are so fluid, like, you know, I've talked to some of the restaurants, they're hurting, but some of them are making it back. And so they're like, they're, they're making progress. Um, it's just fluid, right? But at least we have a really good start of some things to talk about and get into a deeper dive maybe during our planning session to say, do we want to do, uh, you know, we identify some more needs essentially based on what's rolled out and reopened. Does that make sense? Does the council feel like that's probably the direction they want to go in for now? Just, yeah, all right. All right, let me do this. Let me thank the, uh, the committee. Um, I think what we'll probably do, I mean, uh, you know, they, they've worked on this and put a lot of hours into this. And uh, we'll probably ask them uh, maybe prior to our uh, 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 planning session is to have reconvene and just talk about where they feel like things are at, if there's any new recommendations. You know, the things will shift now. We'll be out of emergency declaration mode, I hope pretty darn soon. Um, so it will really be the council as a whole, um, you know, kind of making decisions and, and, but this will be a resource for the entire council to get feedback on. And, um, so, but I want to thank the committee for all their work on this. Um, you know, Grimes said early that, you know, you don't say no to Mayor Seidel. I appreciate that, but you've said no to me many, many times. So I it's normally yeah. we're voting on something, but, uh, <laughs> I'm just teasing. But uh, everybody who worked on the committee really gave it their time and, and brought uh, quite a bit of intelligence. And uh, that's really what we were looking for is smart people who, uh, uh, you know, just could contribute and, and bring different experiences uh, that uh, this council can use that, uh, uh, that experience to uh, make decisions with. So uh, thank you for your service. You are greatly appreciated. I'm going to uh, entertain a motion to accept the report. Uh, so moved by uh, Vice Mayor, seconded by Council Member Siraki. Is there any discussion? I forgot to say one thing, and this is so heartwarming. Um, a friend of mine that is not a member of the chamber, she doesn't have a big company, she's a small company in Oldsmar. She called me up and was so excited that one of y'all called her to ask how her business was doing and everything else. So I'm not going to say who it was or who called or whatever, but it, just one, one little call at a time, one little business at a time. So I forgot to tell, say that in my discussion earlier. Thank you for sharing that. And you know what? More than anything else in my mind, the more that we focus laser and look for ways and ideas and like, even when we're just sharing the correct information directly, right? Our goal, that we're not gonna save anyone business. It's not our role as a government, right? But what we can do as a local government is help them recover faster any way we can. She felt cared for and important. And she, you know, not that she hadn't felt that in the past, but she felt that from this task force, so. Excellent. Well, there you go. Any other discussion? All right, since you're ready to vote, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Council Member Siraki? Yes. Council Member Knapp? Yes. Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Report of the Economic Recovery Plan by Mayor Seidel's COVID-19 Economic Recovery Task Force is accepted with five votes for and zero against. Outstanding. Hey, round of applause one more time for the uh, task force. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you all very much. We appreciate all right, thank it. You. All right, next item on the agenda, item number six. Uh, approve appointment of Jessica Opid as committee member on ordinance review committee. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. Mayor, I make a motion to approve. Mayor, I have a motion second by that Council motion. Member Seraki. I have a seconded by Council Member Gannon. 
discussion. Jessica couldn't be here tonight in order to um, uh, accept her nomination, but she was very grateful and is looking forward to serving on the committee in the absence of now council member Knapp. That is right. And I've asked our city clerk, uh, Jessica sent a message as you all know, and I asked uh, our city clerk if she would read that message so that it could be reflected in the uh, public records. Uh, hi, Kathy. Dude, she wrote an email to Kathy Horvath. Due to the COVID-19 restrictions, I really don't want to cause extra work for anyone setting up a webcam for tonight. I just want to say that I'm honored that I was thought of for the opening on the committee and if approved, will serve to the best of my ability. Part of my daily job in healthcare finance is reviewing policies, procedures, and how they work in the real world. I plan to bring that same level of focus to the committee. I understand I would be joining a group of dedicated individuals and in replacing Council and Knapp, feel I have big shoes to fill and hope to do as good a job as I'm sure he did. Looking forward to getting started. Respectfully, Jessica Ovid. Very nice, very nice. All right, sensing you're ready to vote, roll call please. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Council Member Siraki? Yes. Council Member Knapp? Oh, Council Member Knapp, you're muted. Yes. <laughs> Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. Approve appointment of Jessica Opet as committee member of the Ordinance Review Committee passes with five votes for and zero against. Outstanding. All right, next item on the agenda. Uh, approve reappointment of John Hill to the Firefighter Pension Board, item number seven. Chair will entertain a motion to approve. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved, Second. Council Member. Second. Gannon. Second, Vice Mayor uh, Norris. Discussion. Sensing Thank you for your service. There you go. Uh, Sensing you're ready to vote. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Council Member Siraki. Yes. Council Member Knapp. Yes. Council Member Gannon. Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. The appointment of John Hill to the Firefighter Pension Board is approved with five votes for and zero against. Outstanding. And we do thank him for his service, his continued service. All right, next item on the agenda, city attorney, item number eight. Chair, uh, council members, item number eight is the public hearing for the second reading of ordinance 2020-08. I'll read that by title only. Ordinance 2020-08, an ordinance of the city of Oldsmar, Florida, vacating an unnamed alley located south of Tampa Road, north of Commerce Street and east of Fairfield Street and providing for an effective date hereof. That was the second and final reading of ordinance 2020-08 by title only. All right, this is a public hearing. Do we have anybody from the public who wishes to speak? Felicia? No, we do not. All right. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So, so moved. moved. Okay. So moved. Uh, okay. Council member Knapp, seconded by council member Siraki. Discussion. Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor, excuse me. Sensing you're ready to vote. Roll call. You know, I had to do it once. <laughs> Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Council Member Siraki? Yes. Council Member Knapp? Yes. Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Ordinance 2020 08, vacating an unnamed alley, is adopted with five votes for and zero against. Excellent. Item number nine is the adoption of resolution 2020 14, ratifying executive orders 2020. 18 through 2020-21. I'll read that resolution by title only. Resolution 2020-14, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, ratifying Executive Order 2020-18, which provides for the cancellation of the Executive Order 2020-05, which closed all flea markets within the city limits. Ratifying Executive Order 2020-19, which provides for the temporary use permit process to increase allowance for additional outside seating. Ratifying Executive Order 2020-20, which provides for the extension of the COVID-19 state of emergency through May 11th, 2020. Ratifying Executive Order 2020-21, which provides for the extension of the COVID-19 state of emergency through May 18, 2020, and providing for an effective date hereof. That was reading resolution 2020-14 by Ted Loma. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Council Thank Member you. Gannon, seconded by Council Member Knapp. Discussion. Seeing none, since you're ready to vote, roll call. 
Um, Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Councilmember Siraki? Yes. Councilmember Knapp? Yes. Councilmember Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Resolution 2020-14, ratifying executive orders 2020-18 through 21 is adopted with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Item number 10 um, is consideration of approval of second amendment, the city attorney contract effective June 1, 2020 revising fees. And I'd just like to go ahead and read my memorandum. It's a little uncomfortable for me to ask for this. So I'm gonna read the memo. Don't worry, I won't make you feel any worse. <laughs> The purpose of uh, the memorandum that I provided to the council was to request city council approval of an adjustment to our law firm's monthly retainer rate from $5,500 to $6,500 per month and an adjustment to our law firm's hourly rate from $175 to $200 per hour. The need for the monthly retainer rate and hourly rate adjustments comes from two factors. First, our law firm has not adjusted the retainer or the hourly rate since 2016. The retainer rate increase will only be the fourth time in the past 24 years that I have requested an increase. As for the hourly rate increase, I've only requested an increase in the hourly rate five times in the past 24 years. Secondly, the adjustment is essential for our law firm to remain competitive and keep up with the day-to-day -day expenses associated with the cost in running our law firm. A large part of that is due to our continued investment in technology, which increases our efficiency. For example, last year, our law firm made a substantial investment in changing our software program to Zola Suite. Zola Suite is a legal practice uh, management software which provides for document management and automation, task management, calendaring, intelligent email, matter management, time and billing, and trust accounting functions. In addition, our law firm now has three city, county, and local government board certified attorneys. Uh, we believe our experience in local government allows us to complete work in less time than any of the less experienced law firms. And as you'll know from these adjustments, our firm's charges still remain highly competitive with other law firms that practice within our specialty as well uh, within the law profession. I'm asking for these changes to be implemented by way of a contract change um, at effective June 1, 2020. And I'd be happy to answer any questions I, I, I do have some analysis that was done uh, based upon the number of retainer hours over the last several years with their averages per month. And I've also have um, a list of attorney fee survey for all 24 cities that was done in 2018. It has not been updated yet, uh, but I have uh, what those values were in August of 2018, if that's of any help to the county. Thank you. If, we, if, if anybody wishes to have that, I'll, I'll Come back to the chair. We'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So moved. Second. Council member Gannon, seconded by Vice Mayor Norris. Um, comments. Thank you, Tom, for everything that you do. You and your firm are an absolute bargain Thank compared you. to it's it's un, it's unimaginable the amount of work that you guys do. Thank you. You are the experts in the field. Thank Council you. member Saraki. Thank you, Mayor Tom. I just want to say thank you for everything you do. In helping me over the years you're just a huge asset to the city of Oldsmar thank you thank you vice mayor same thing Tom I don't trust a whole lot of people completely in this world but I sure I certainly trust you and when I was reading through this I thought that's kind of like a zero-sum game he's becoming more efficient he's only raised his rates five times in 24 years so I I I, I trust your counsel and I appreciate that you always take our calls, you always answer our questions, and you and you represent us well. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's Member Knapp. I'd just like to echo everything everyone else said, uh, Tom. In my limited time uh, serving both on the Ordinance Review Committee as well as now here on the Council, um, the guidance and opinions you've given to us uh, is is just greatly valued, and uh, I have a sincere appreciation for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I have a couple comments. First off, I think this is outrageous. This is a huge, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, I, uh, in my business on the corporate side, I, I work with some different attorneys uh, pretty regularly. I think I've mentioned it before. I, it's just a habit. I learned that it's money well spent. And I was curious because I haven't looked in a while uh, but I always get the invoice, gets email, and I get copied on it. It goes to our uh, little accounting team, and 
And so I w had to go look and see what the hourly rate that I was paying because I thought um, it was one thing and it's a lot more than I thought it was. <laughs> Apparently it's gone up since I hired him 10 years ago, like multiple times. I know it has, but uh, you're a real bargain for the, uh, I'll just say that uh, your rate is extremely competitive. Um, I want to take a look at what he's charging me for paralegals because I, I don't know. It seems to be uh, more in the rate of what you're charging us. I mean, you're, you really charge us. Uh, I think your service is excellent. Uh, and that's, and I think most importantly, your advice is sound and it, and it protects our city and it is a good sounding board. I've said this to council members before, especially new ones. I, I will uh, give them a hard time about, uh, when there's a difficult decision before us, uh, we get a great amount of information from our city manager and our city clerk. But if you're not calling your city attorney to ask them their opinion on things, uh, you, you're, you're wasting uh, a really great resource. And so I know I call you when there's a major decision and uh, you're very responsive and you give good advice. And most of the time, I don't like what you're saying because but I already know what you're going to say when I call. But uh, no, I think it's certainly uh, uh, well-earned. And um, like I said, you look out for the city and the advice is always solid. So thank you, Mayor. Uh, we appreciate your service. With that, roll call, please. Thank you. Yes, Mayor Norris. Absolutely. Council Member Siraki. Yes. Council Member Knapp. Yes. Council Member Gannon. Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. Second thank Amendment you. to City Attorney Contract is approved with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all I have under city attorney. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, next item, next section of the agenda is city manager item number 11. Thank you, Mayor. Item 11 is request council approval for the agreement of the use of the recreation facilities with Ellsmar Youth Soccer Association Incorporated. The city of Ellsmar partners with youth sports organizations to provide recreation-based sports activities at the Ellsmar Sports Complex. This item recommends the approval of an agreement authorizing the use of soccer football fields number one, two, and three, and baseball outfields number three and four as determined by registration numbers. The league will be responsible to reimburse the city of Oldsmar for a portion of the total electricity costs which were incurred during the term of the agreement. The agreement has been reviewed by the city attorney and staff recommends approval. Okay, chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So moved, council member Gannon, do I have a second? Vice mayor, any discussion? Sensing your right of vote. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Councilmember Siraki. Yes. Councilmember Nat. Yes. Councilmember Gannon. Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. Uh, approval of youth ag of agreement for the use of recreation facilities with Oldsmar Oldsmar Youth Soccer Association passes with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Item twelve. Thank you, Mayor. Item twelve is request council approval for another agreement on the use of recreation facilities this time with Parham Harbor Youth Football Association Incorporated. City of Oldsmar partners with youth sports organizations, as we've mentioned previously, for activities at the Oldsmar Sports Complex. This item recommends the approval of an agreement authorizing the use of soccer and football fields numbers one, two, and three, and also baseball outfields number three and four as determined by registration numbers. The league will be responsible to reimburse the city of Oldsmar for a portion of the total electricity costs which were incurred during the term of agreement the actual agreement on page 70 uh, contains an error that was noted by council member Knapp. Uh, there's a reference on the football table, second column to field number eight, which does not exist anymore. Um, so good catch council member Knapp. Uh, the league will be responsible as I mentioned and the agreement has been reviewed by the attorney and staff recommends approval. Outstanding, all right. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So, so move. So move council member Eagle Eye Knapp. Uh, seconded by council member Siraki. Discussion. <laughs> it's always the new guys, right? All right, since you're ready, I thought it would be our legal counsel. I don't, you know, but well, wait, look at that look. <laughs> After the raise and everything. By golly. Oh, give me a roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Council member Siraki. Yes. Council member Knapp. Yes. Council member Gannon. Yes. Mayor Saito. Yes. Agreement for the use of recreation facilities with Palm Harbor Youth Football Association is approved with five votes for and zero against. 
I'm 13. Thank you, Mayor. In Tom's defense, he would have probably no reason to know that field number eight no longer exists. And as a side comment, I think he is a bargain as well. Anyway, item 13, request council approval for the first amendment to the wildlife, excuse me, wildland fire protection services agreement with Pinellas County. Pinellas County has a need for wildland fire protection services, including a response to the scene of a fire, life safety related emergency, man-made or natural disaster, or public service requests within the Pinellas County parks and conservation areas. On November 3rd, 2015, the city of Oldsmar entered into an agreement to provide wildland fire protection services to an area of the Brooker Creek Preserve described as, quote, bounded on the north by Pasco County, on the east by Hillsborough County, on the south by the contractor, which is the city of Oldsmar, and on the west by the Crescent Oaks, Fieldstone Village, Coventry Village, Ridgemore, and East Lake Woodland subdivisions, end quote. The contractor, which is the city of Oldsmar, shall provide a review of those portions of funds expended, and that's the amendment, relates to our need to be accountable for the funds we receive, which are $12,000 annually. Upon approval of this amendment, all terms of the original agreement will remain in force and effect as if the original term of the contract expired on September 30th, 2025. The attorney has reviewed and staff recommends approval. All right, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So moved by the mayor, second by council member Siraki. Discussion? Vice Mayor. I would just like to thank Chief Jason Swabe for being cool with the additional account. Well, I like accountability, so I'm good with stuff like this. More accountability to me is more transparent in everything that we do. So thank you, Jason, for being cool with it. <laughs> I hear that you are, so that's why I'm saying that. Jason likes transparency. He's that kind of guy. All right, any, any other comments? Set you in your right to vote, roll call. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Councilmember Sarecki? Yes. Councilmember Knapp? Yes. Councilmember Gannon? Yes. Mayor Saito? Yes. First Amendment to the Wildland Fire Protection Service Agreement is approved with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Item 14. Thank you, Mayor. Item 14 does not require council action. It's an update on negotiations with the top ranked proposal for development of the property adjacent to City Hall, which we were tasked with providing a report um, summarizing or maybe going a little deeper than the conversation at the last meeting. Um, Assistant City Manager Donnelly is going to make a presentation here and you should feel free to reference the report that she submitted to Council. I believe it was last night or this morning. Felicia. Donnelly, you're on mute. Felicia, you're muted. You're on. All right. I'm, I'm sharing my screen right now so you guys can see a, a PowerPoint. Um, I went ahead and, to, and put together a timeline so we could see all of the actions that we've had with Simone Development since the beginning. So in June of 2019, um, the city provided all existing documentation that we have on the site. Um, it's a robust collection of everything from CAD drawings and surveys and engineering work and planning documents. And we um, shared that with all the proposers on in June 2019. Um, the proposers put together their proposals. They came to you all in November. And November the 5th, um, the council ranked Simone as the highest proposal. We had um, several meetings with Simone in November and uh, we met with them twice. We discussed site layouts and site constraints, and um, we requested a um, concept site plan to be submitted by 1220, different from the hotel renderings that we saw in the proposal. In December, we continued to um, meet with Simone to discuss the preliminary site plan, um, which they uh, gave us at the meeting on 1219. On uh, 1223 and the rest of December, the city staff did some other things. Um, we needed to uh, request vacation of the alley. And so you all just approved that tonight. And then we started discussions with Tico about what the ramifications are and also with the density increase with forward Pinellas because the site will require a density increase. 
In January of 2020, the, our TRC met to review the vacation request. Um, we met again with Simone to discuss the design of the hotel and the preliminary site plan. On January the 22nd, we received a site plan at the meeting, which was presented to the council at a work session on January 23rd. Um, council, uh, the submitted design was rejected because it didn't meet the intent of the rooftop bar, if you recall. So we, we sent them back to the drawing board to produce the product that um, they had portrayed in their initial proposal. Sorry. And then in February of 2020, um, the planning board recommended the alley vacation. We met with DOT to discuss site development impacts to um, State Road 580 and to Tampa Road. A revised preliminary concept site plan received, was received from the engineer different than the hotel plan. In March, another revised site plan was received from the engineer. We received a progress letter on March the 3rd from Simone. I attached it to your documentation um, to show the steps that they had taken. It's not dated, but we received it on March the 3rd. On March the 5th, we had the council work session where the new hotel design was um, favorably received. Um, March 19th, city staff met with Simone right at the beginning of the COVID-19 to discuss a revised concept plan. March 26th and March 27th, we had internal meetings with um, Simone's engineer to discuss different site considerations, including stormwater and density and planning considerations. April the 2nd, um, we received the first site plan that demonstrated a, the, what the site will look like post-garage. So there's two site plans. There's a pre-garage, which is you know, the temporary parking, which requires a parking lease. And um, the post-garage is when they move that temporary parking into the, the city garage. So it's really the approval of two different site plans that come with this agreement. And April the 16th, the TRC meeting um, discussed the code amendment change for the hotel density. On April the 19th, we received the first full set of plans that included both the pre-garage and post-garage. And this was the first set of plan that we received that really had sufficient amount of data for us to evaluate it. So on April 21st, we're still proceeding with the alley vacation. Um, on, for, on April 26, we reviewed the site plans and the comments were sent to the engineer. Um, I attached that um, to your email that you received earlier. In May, uh, May 1st, a draft development agreement, parking garage lease, surface parking lease, and the declaration of restrictive covenants um, was transmitted by the city attorney to the city. On May the 5th, we had the first reading of the vacation ordinance. Um, we also met with the engineer to discuss the city comments. Um, we did that um, via Zoom. On the 8th, we received the responses to the comments and revised plan, but the, the plan and the comment that we received didn't indicate the present boundary line, which is of particular importance. So we um, sent it directly back to the consultant so that it's Simone development. And then on May 11th, we received a, another version of, resive, of a revised plan. And um, we're currently reviewing that and we should be able to render comments to him tomorrow. I just got all of them from all the departments. So that is where, that is the timeline. Okay. All right. Um, and then the next steps, if, if we wanted to, to talk, I'm, I'm sorry about the, the next steps, what do, we, what do we have to do from here? Well, the first thing is we need a mutually acceptable site plan by both parties. Um, we need our legal documents, the terms to be tentatively agreed. We can't, we still have to survey the property for a purchase and sale agreement and for the lease. We can't even start that process until we get the site plan because we don't know how much land that we actually have to lease to him. And it crosses several boundary lines, so it's not as clean as as the property that he's purchasing. Um, then we'll present essential terms of a development agreement to the council. 
and the council reviews and tells us to um, continue. Then the city manager um, transmits the development agreement to the planning board and the planning board reviews and makes recommendations to council within 30 days. The council then conducts two public hearings. We also um, require seven days notice and letters to adjacent property owners. And then we um, bring the development agreement and the associated documents to be considered for approval by city council. And at the same time, this isn't part of the critical path, but the a code amendment approval by the planning board and the city council requires two readings. We've already started that process. And then, and then after the development agreement is approved, we still have to bring it to forward Pinellas and the board of county commissioners to approve the density increase and that's either through a tier one or tier two amendment um, to be determined by forward Pinellas. So we still have um, uh, quite a bit of steps to accomplish. All right. Do you have more to your report? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for giving us the timelines. Um, any questions anyone has? Any questions or comments? No one. Okay. Uh, Council Member Gannon. Do comments include concerns? Yep. You're on mute again. Oh, there you go. Yes. Oh, you got the keystroke going, huh? Yeah, I do the keystroke thing. Um, I wanted to thank uh, the Assistant City Manager for putting together this um, timeline. Um, this timeline was uh, quite concerning for me upon review, and I'll tell you why. Since November, that's been seven months. We've had seven, as I count it, site plan submissions during that time. And it's hard for me to understand why those plans would not be correct with data that was provided almost just shy of a year ago. So I have a real concern um, with it, what appears to be the engineering um, firm that is part of the Simone development um, team. Um, and you know, also with the caveat that, that, that Simone was not my first ranked um, proposal uh, back in November, but I am a little concerned about the sluggishness. Uh, I, I'm trying to find a, a good adjective that's not too um, Harsh. I understand that, that the process is what it is, and there are certain steps that, as the assistant city manager just described, require two readings or two submissions or meetings or you know that makes sense to me. And then and I understand that, but I am I do have concerns. Um, so I just wanted to see if anyone else on the council had similar concerns with the timeline so far. Okay. Any other uh, comments? Anybody? Council member Dan. I, I would I would second uh, having some of the same concerns that Councilmember Gannon uh, just presented. You know, just from looking at that timeline and kind of understanding um, some of the shortfalls that seem to have happened up to this point, um, given the information that was provided on the front end, uh, it is definitely concerning. And I think it's something to keep an eye on. Um, from the initial feedback, I did ask the Assistant City Manager earlier this morning when we met uh, how things were looking on the most recent submission and they seem to be on uh, you know mostly fixed and addressed properly now so it's it seems like uh, things may have turned a corner at this point in terms of that progress so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the kind of the next week or two holds in terms of the discussions back and forth with the Simone group that's all I have mayor thank you thank you council member Sraki. Thank you, Mayor. I think uh, Council Member Gannon and Nap covered mostly everything I want to say. The only thing that I feel is really important at this point is that we keep on the engineering firm doing these site plans. We've got we've to get moving on this. I'm a little concerned, as they both said, it's time to move forward and get this going. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. You're on mute. Trying to do what Katie taught me how to do. Okay. Um, yes, I was not aware that we were having all of these issues with um, the 
all of the different submissions and everything. But I think now that it's out in the open, I have to say that I do appreciate um, Simone's letter to us and I and my conversation with Al and Felicia today. I feel that this is kind of going to be a wake-up call for them that they need to get on the ball. Um, that we're not going to wait forever and we're not going to accept um, substandard engineering. I'm not an engineer, so I don't really know what all this means, but um, I feel the same way. But I'm glad that that we're moving forward mm -hmm. at this point. So that's it. That's not all. All right. I, I just have a couple. Uh, you know, I, I, I echo the sentiments. You know, I, I, we made the decision collectively. Uh, the, the Simone group was the group. I still think they're the right group based on their history with the city. However, what I would say is it was presented and awarded, awards not the right way, but the top rank, uh, the ranking took place November 5th. Uh, four months later, we saw over the next four months, there were some changes in the, in the uh, design of the hotel. Uh, you know, we gave it a, a, a favorable thumbs up on the final one um, in March. I think it was March 5th. And so there's been a couple months and it is concerning that um, specifically the engineering plans have been inadequate. And it sounds like they've been really uh, more than just a matter of uh, having to meet additional requirements. It, it sounds like it's really been an issue. And so that was part of the reason why I, I wanted to make a point of getting a, a more detailed up update on it. I, I would like to ask the plans that we received on the 11th, um, how do they look? I know you just got comments back, um, but is there, is there a sense that the plans, uh, the revised plan uh, is uh, being provided with uh, more thorough and accurate, accurate information on it or what we're looking for? I'm not really sure yet, so I'm hopeful, um, cautiously optimistic. Um, you know, we seem to be making progress, but there's still some concerns that um, with the stormwater that um, still have to be addressed. So there's still drainage calculations and some stormwater issues that, um, that you know, hopefully will be resolved. And is it reasonable, and, and I know you and I have had conversations in, in the city manager, it, it, it's reasonable to assume that these stormwater calculations are not something that gets done over a weekend, right? I mean, there, I recognize each step is complicated and there's a lot of moving parts, and, but that's, what, that's, why, that's why I don't do that for a living. The people who do, you expect that they'll understand that, right? So I don't really feel bad about that. But the point is, um, I guess the question is, is it a reasonable timeline? Uh, we have a meeting on uh, June 16. Uh, is it reasonable for us to expect that the engineering plans uh, should be, which seems to be really kind of at the moment, uh, the core of the challenge um, is it reasonable for us to say, I mean, what's a reasonable timeline to say that, um, you know, we, we have what we expect to have what we need from them by such and such timeline. That is a question. Al, did you want me to address that? But I'll wait. I, 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 I would think a, a month should be adequate. Um, you know, they've been working on this for quite a while. So I'm hoping that within a month we can get the, um, the comments resolved. At least that it, in a material way, right? That it, maybe, it might, maybe it's not 100% final because there might be some other moving parts that we require and so forth, but that the material uh, portion of the plan, other than the, something that might uh, normally get changed over the course of time in any kind of project like this, but it's not unreasonable for us to come into that meeting on the 16th and know that the day before by the 15th, there's an expectation that, you know, we're way past this, this stag that we've had and we're not going to come in here and have another discussion like this because I'm of the mindset 
uh, that if we do, then it might be time to put on the agenda uh, for a few for the next meeting uh, that we look at uh, revisiting the ranking that we did. I don't want to do that. I'll say this publicly. I want the Simone group. I had this conversation. I will tell you after our last uh, conference call, I did receive a, a call from Paul Simone, and I, you know, just very honestly told him my concern and uh, that I thought that the council probably felt the same way, but we hadn't discussed it. And that, um, you know, we're building a hotel, boutique hotel here in Oldsmart in downtown. And we want it to be them. But if it's not them, we're still building one. It's just that simple. And he respected that. You know, look, the guy, he'd be out there with a shovel tomorrow if he could. I mean, you know, he's committed. But, you know, he's he has to make sure the folks that he hires is, is delivering. So, Al, did you want to weigh in? Only to say that we have a staff meeting to evaluate the department's review of what was submitted on the 11th. So we'll have a pretty good idea tomorrow how we're feeling about it. And I would commit to saying that by the time we were preparing the agenda for the June 16th meeting, I think we'll have a really good feel for whether or not it's time to consider those things you're mentioning. Okay. And I, I just asked Tom to weigh in as well. So um, I don't understand why it has taken this long. Um, I, I know the timeline, we've all worked through it, Felicia and Al and I, since the very, very beginning. Um, it should not be taking them this long to get this work done. So, and obviously I think that, um, you know, based upon their response to the comments that um, were provided to them last month, um, that they should have been able to address all of them already. Um, but. Uh, they should definitely be done by the June 16th meeting. That's my thoughts. Okay. Does, uh, does, does, does council have anything they want to add or, or do, I'm, I'm happy to have a little bit of a discussion here. Council member Knapp. Uh, thank you, mayor. I, I just had a, a question that um, I guess it sounds like what's, what's about on the horizon from staff is uh, pr potentially another round of comments issued to the engineering firm. And uh, you know, by our my count from or from that email on the 27th of April, there was a total of 21. Um, I'm just wondering uh, if city staff will be able to provide whatever the next communication is, if 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 that's possible, and if not, that's okay. But I'm just kind of curious how well that's been whittled down, and um, you know, and then obviously probably just kind of keeping plug plugged in and tuned into what's going on as those are addressed, you know, not on a daily basis or anything like that by any means, but uh, just kind of know, you know, are things trending in the right direction is what I'm curious about. I'll make it clear by the time we have our individual meetings for the preparation of the 16th, how collectively Felicia, Tom, and myself and the staff feel about that. And we won't pull any punches, I promise you. Good. Good, yeah, because my preference would be to say, you know, tell us what staff's not happy in the sense of that they don't feel not not that they're disagreeing on things. That's you know that's the problem. It'd be one thing if there were disagreements on stuff. That's not what what we're dealing with, right? So, I think that's a great solution, um, Al. All right, any other comments before we move on? All right, item number. Thank you, Felicia and and uh, Al and everyone and Tom. Appreciate the update. I have confidence that they'll step it up. We'll get through it and we're gonna enjoy the 16th meeting and and we'll be out there ready to cut the ribbon in no time at all. So, all right, item 15. Thank you, Mayor. Item 15 is adopt resolution 2020-09, authorizing the construction of the Douglas Road from Commerce Boulevard to Stevens Avenue, or what we call as the Brooker Creek Boulevard project. Before I read the resolution, a little background, the Florida State Legislature awarded a $1 million state appropriation for the reconstruction of Douglas Road in the state fiscal year 2020 budget. The goal of the project is to improve the safety, connectivity, and efficiency of passenger cars, trucks, buses, cyclists, and pedestrians by providing an improved, aesthetically pleasing corridor, the Cypress Lakes Industrial Park should be energized. This is generally a uh, formality step to accept the grant by signing the agreement with FDOT. Um, funding for the design is partially in this year's budget, 
Um, and there will be additional funding presented for next year, which is probably where the meat of the construction should take place, hopefully. And Council Member Knapp also found an error on this one on page 104. Um, his laser eyeballs were working hard. There was a there was a mistaken reference to a traffic light where the intersection didn't exist and he caught it. So thank you for that and we appreciate it. And I'd like to read the resolution. Resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, approving the state funded grant agreement between the State of Florida Department of Transportation or FDOT and the state and the city of Oldsmar numbered 415-738-8-54-01. Authorizing the mayor and city manager to sign the agreement on behalf of the city and providing for an effective date hereof. Mayor, that concludes the reading of resolution 2020-09. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. So, so moves uh, council member Siraki, uh, seconded by uh, council member Gannon. Uh, discussion? I'm afraid we're going to have to put Nap on staff the way he's, you know, drilling into these agreements. <laughs> he's going to want yeah, we, to. Get we had a uh, an intersection, like you said, that didn't exist. Somehow, Commerce and uh, Racetrack Road intersected somewhere. Well, uh, that that might be a future plan. I don't know. Sensing you're ready to vote. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Councilmember Siraki. Yes. Councilmember Nap. Yes. Councilmember Gannon. Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. Resolution 2020-09 is adopted with five votes for and zero against. Item 16. Thank you, Mayor. Item 16 is request council approval to authorize the city manager to advertise 2020-12-ITB, which stands for invitation to bid, the Ellsmar Trail footbridge renovations. Two wooden footbridges along the Ellsmar Trail, just south of the National Orange boat ramp, are showing signs of deterioration and have met the end of their life cycle. Improvements to the decking and handrails are necessary to ensure that this heavily used section of the trail remains safe for its users. Funding in the amount of $40,000 for the repair of the trail bridges is appropriate in the 1920 capital improvement budget in fund 001 and staff recommends approval. All right, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. So moves uh, council member uh, Gannon, seconded by uh, Council Member Siraki. Any discussion? I mean, is it is it true that they're trying to make these things strong enough to support horses going across? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> and, and golf carts. <laughs> and golf carts carrying horses. Uh, any other comments, Council Member Siraki? I just want to say I love our bike trails. This is a great item. I all I can say is you, I see improvements every time I ride my bike around the city. Thank you for everything. Excellent. Anybody else? All right. Sensing you're ready to vote. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Council Member Siraki. Positively. Council Member Knapp. Yes. Council Member Gannon. Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. Approval to authorize the city manager to advertise 2020-12-ITB passes with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Item number 17. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 17 is a request for council approval to award contract for 2020-001 RFP professional services for climate resiliency plan to WSP USA Incorporated. If you're familiar with this item, the city advertised an RFP for a climate resiliency plan in November of 2019. Seven firms submitted proposals with four firms invited back for a presentation and interview resulting in WSP USA Incorporated ranked as the highest firm by a staff selection committee. At the April 21st, 2020 meeting, City Council approved the committee's ranking and recommendation to award the work to the top ranked firm. Staff now requests the firm approval of the negotiated contract with WSP USA Incorporated. The city has applied for a $75,000 resiliency grant through FDP to update some resiliency related elements in the city comprehensive plan and to conduct additional public outreach related to the study. The recipients of the grant are expected to be announced in June 2020. Providing the grant announcement is favorable and the city is awarded funding. Staff will return to council to request acceptance of the $75,000 funding, approval of a second work order for the contracted consultant, and additional budgetary appropriations to cover the subsequent comprehensive plan work. Funding is not to exceed $125,000 
and is currently appropriated to the 401 fund and staff recommends approval. All right, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Vice Mayor. Second. Then by Council Member Nat. Discussion. Sensing you're ready to vote. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Council Member Siraki. Yes. Council Member Nat. Yes. Council Member Gannon. Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. Contract award for 2020-001 RFP to WSP USA is passed with five votes for and zero against. Thank you. Got anything else for us there, city manager? That's it, thank you, sir. Thank you, city clerk. Oh, I don't have anything. All right, all right, city council, item number 18, discuss holding or canceling June advisory board meetings. I will open it up for discussion. Uh, you know, I'll give you uh, out of the shoot. Uh, I don't, I, I think we're at a point right now uh, where things are continuing to open up. Uh, the trend yesterday, there was, uh, the state had a 1.9% positive test rate. It's the lowest it's been. We've been sitting with nine cases now for I think a couple of weeks, maybe longer. I'm not sure exactly. I know that it hasn't changed much, much. I think it's time for us to go back to uh, next month. Um, and, and we, we would task the city clerk, uh, to come up with some good social distancing for getting the uh, uh, meetings ready. Uh, but um, I'm, I'm open to uh, any comments or discussion. Councilmember Gannon. I was curious as to our city attorney's uh, recommendation or thoughts on holding the quasi-judicial hearings, which are the code enforcement, planning, and adjustment um, with the social distancing guidelines, the efficacy of that, if it's possible, if it can be done. Right. So um, I can tell you that we are doing it in Tarpon Springs currently. We have had several quasi-judicial hearings, some of them at the board level, which was the Planning and Zoning Board of Adjustment, and uh, also at the commission level too. Um, and it's got easier every single time. There is a process that we would use um, and, um, you know, I, I was really, really hesitant in the beginning as to whether or not I thought that that was going to work because I was really worried about due process concerns. Uh, but it's working very well. Um, and I've had absolutely no um, feedback from anyone that was, uh, for example, cut off, let out, um, weren't able to connect, dropped, you know, those types of things. So if we're going to use the virtual meetings, as long as the city clerk and city staff, IT people could, you know, make it available to, um, you know, the board members and then provide access uh, by way of public uh, input or, or panelists is what they refer to sometimes, depending upon uh, how much um, leeway we want to give them as they come in, as the public comes in. But I think that it can be done. Um, and I'd also remind you that the governor's order is only going to last until June the 7th. Uh, I'm sorry, July the 7th that we know of right now. I doubt that it'll be extended past that. So um, I'm ready to move forward. Um, if, the, if the city clerk's office and uh, city IT people can deal with it, um, I think that we should start back. Well, and, and, I, and my, my comment was, and I, I don't know if Katie was asking this, yeah, uh, exercising social distancing at an in-person meeting is what, what we were talking about. That's so, exactly right. I was asking if, if we could do in-person with the social distancing or if you would recommend that we do virtual. So um, I think that the council chambers is large enough that we could probably do it. Um, I think that Ann could uh, weigh in and maybe Marie as to the number of participants in the, in the committees and boards that I don't attend on a regular basis. Um, but I can tell you, a Board of Adjustment, uh, code, enf code Enforcement hasn't met in over a year, I think. Uh, but um, those other boards, my experience is, is there's very few people that attend them. And so we'd more than likely be able to address all those distancing requirements if it was done uh, with everybody in the same room. Anybody else? Yeah, and, and you know, um, I, I will tell you, it, it, 
we'll, we'll, we'll get to this in a minute, but we can discuss it here. Um, you know, it's, it's my intention, unless there is some real concern from the council uh, to cancel uh, the executive order that I issued for virtual meetings for this council. Uh, being our intent would be that our next meeting would be a couple weeks from now. Uh, we would apply the social distancing rules to us as we would anybody else. Uh, uh, the city clerk and I have already had some conversations about how we could maybe spread people out on the dais a little bit more um, by moving a couple folks around. And, um, you know, our restaurants are opening up. People are in the grocery stores. Our businesses are opening up. Um, frankly, um, I think it's probably time, uh, the trend, and unless there was some radical shift between over the next two weeks, uh, which I just can't imagine that there will be. And uh, there's, I could tell you there's real growing consensus that this, we're, we're in the, we are absolutely in the right direction. Uh, doesn't mean we won't have to deal with it again. When the season comes back around, that's the question mark for everybody, right? But so that's that's really my intention, unless I hear something otherwise from my council members here that they have some real concerns about that. Vice Mayor. I just want to make sure that if we do meet in person at our next council meeting that social distancing is and I have nothing against my two people on next, Kathy and Dan, I love y'all, but I personally know somebody that died. I personally know people that have been on vents. I personally know, you know, I haven't been in contact with them, thank God, but I'm not prepared to go back to business as usual. And so I would want, if it's gonna be in two weeks or three weeks, if it's in two weeks, I would want just for my assurance that yeah, you know, are we going to wear masks? Are we going to, you know, I don't know. And if I'm the only one that feels that way, would I possibly be able to call in like Katie did when she came back from her cruise at the next one so that I don't have to put y'all, you know, you guys don't have to do it just because I'm the one that is still leery about, you know, so still leery about getting together. That's I'm right. still That's staying right. away from people. I've touched I, three people in the past two and a half months, so. <laughs> gotcha. All right, uh, Council Member Siraki. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanna say I agree with what Tom says. I think it's time that we move forward and get moving in the right direction for recovery. Let's go. I'm with you, I'm with you. Council Member Knapp. Uh, quick question, just um, um, what Council Member Norris just brought up is, um, whether or not we'll be encouraged to wear a mask or be permitted to wear a mask during the meeting. I guess that's kind of a Tom question, if anything, if there's any issue with that or not. So uh, first of all, with the, with the distancing, um, what I've seen in the other cities that we're doing is, is uh, the charter officials are basically removed from the dais and put down into the audience at tables in front of the dais or to the sides of the dais. And that would allow us to spread out, the, the council to spread out up top maybe move Kathy or Ian or both of them along with um, with Al and I down so that you have the full dais uh, at least six feet apart. Um, as for the masks, um, you know, I have some uh, council members in other cities that are actually wearing masks to the meeting. It's a little difficult to understand uh, them sometimes because the sound is a little bit muffled. And if you're separating away from the microphone, that may be a problem, but I, I think that if you feel that you need to do it, you need to wear it, you should wear it. Yeah, I would agree 100%. I don't think yeah. there's anything that precludes anyone from wearing a mask. I, I'm not in favor of requiring everyone to wear a mask. I think that's your call. Tom, there, is there any conflict, um, assuming that we didn't cancel the executive order because it does permit, doesn't require, is there any conflict if one or multiple council members felt uncomfortable coming to the council meeting in person and uh, we allowed them to call in? It's, I don't know how we would do Zoom. Yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely not an issue. 
if one or more members of the council wanted to appear by uh, computerized uh, technology or audio, then uh, that's absolutely allowable. I have one city, Madeira Beach, where there's four of them that come and one that doesn't because of um, existing health concerns. That's gotcha. right. Uh, and so it's, um, it's, the yeah. fiscal, it's the fiscal quorum requirement of the Sunshine Law uh, that, that we're, we're, we're basically trying to overlook at this point. Um, so whether it's one um, in council chambers like Dunedin um, or it's four like Madeira Beach or whatever you want to do so long as we have access and the council member can hear what's going on and and um, can participate in the meeting that's going to be absolutely legal. All right excellent. Okay. All right uh, council member Gannon. You got to put your finger back down. Or up. You're muted again. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I um I would like a, to make a motion to move forward with the June advisory and quasi judicial meetings as currently scheduled for June 2020. I don't know that it requires a motion, does it? No. Because they're planned right now. That's correct. It would only be if they were going to be canceled. Do you need a motion to hold them via Zoom if necessary? No, because that's permitted by way of the governor's executive order. Okay, then I withdraw my motion. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, does anybody object to that? It doesn't require action. Then I'm going to move on to item number 19. Discuss rescheduling uh, uh, council planning conference. I know we had some dates to look at. I, I would turn to uh, our city manager, our assistant city manager, uh, city manager, um, if there was any dates that people kind of, uh, there was a consensus on? I believe the third and the ninth were the most popular, but I did not get a full response from everybody. My fault, I didn't ask the appropriate questions. From what I remembered and wrote down, the third would appear to be the most popular from what I got. The ninth was doable. The later ones were more of a problem. All right, council member Nat. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to weigh in earlier with the city manager, but my preference would be for the third or either the Wednesday or even the third. And so, and of course mine were on the 10th and 11 because the city manager didn't ask me when I was in there. Was well, my birthday's the 10th. So a 10th is out for me. My, pref my preference is the third or the ninth. I love y'all, but I don't want to spend my birthday with you. I thought for sure you were going to want to have a party there. So your birthday is on the 10th? Uh-huh. And the 11th is out for everybody? Council Member Siraki? All the dates are good for me. I think we should do it on the 10th so I can get get a birthday cake for Linda. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> and who was, and was the 11th, was the 11th problematic for anybody? Well, if I proceed with my birthday plans, I don't want to leave and have to come home. So ah, so you got some big plans, huh? Well, it's a family tradition. Well, I'm going to be, what time would we do this at? Did we discuss no. times? Council Member Gannon. The only date I can do is the third. It's the only one you there can? There we go. Yeah. I can do the third. My preference was actually to reschedule and postpone it to fall, but it sounds like that is not the consensus of the council. So in that case, my, the only date I am available is the third at three. I'm good on the third. third. Well, let's, let's, yeah, okay. So let's talk about the third for just a minute or, or talk about it in general. So it's my preference that we do get together, right? And what I would say, and part of the reason I was trying to make it later was really kind of to see what the progress is around town and where we're at and what's open. You know, there's a growing consensus that the governor is going to start to accelerate his phases faster and faster as long as things continue to trend the way they are. And so it probably opens up the door for us to have a little bit more discussion, not just around the council priorities, but also a little bit more discussion on recovery and uh, you know, what, are, what, what do we see as possible needs. My, my preference, simply because you know, the reality is we're dealing with quite a few unknowns 
Um, I don't envision our priorities changing a whole lot right now. Um, you know, that may not be the pleasure of the council, uh, but what I was going to propose is that we have a shorter meeting and we go ahead and have a council planning conference. Uh, and it might even be considered more of a council planning meeting where it's going to be an hour and a half or something along that line. It's not a, it's not an all day session. It's not that type of meeting. Um, that we can review the current uh, priorities from this, this current year uh, or going for the new year based on the old, have some discussion if anyone wishes to, to really change something with the goal being to have at a later time, a more robust meeting to evaluate where we're at as a city. And uh, you know, it's just a different time. It might be a, a great opportunity to get together and di dive a little bit deeper. Uh, it will answer a lot of questions, I think. Uh, what's the real estate market doing? Uh, the significance of that, of course, is that the Lord uh, that we'll see in the future. Uh, so my preference was to go ahead and have it, make it a short abbreviated meeting. Let's talk about the priorities. It'll be an opportunity maybe to talk about if there is some, you know, uh, um, effort that we wanna put forth as it related to recovery as a council and a workshop environment, uh, but make it an abbreviated one with the plans of coming back later as the market has opened more up, uh, opened up more and uh, we, we know more. Is everybody okay with that? So we're for the third. And it will come right back down to that third, wouldn't we? Yeah, I'm good with it. Can Me we too. say four o'clock on the third? Yeah. Is everyone good with that? It's 3 p.m. 3.30? Did somebody say 3.30? Whatever you say, Mayor. I can do either one, 3.30 or 4. Why don't we do 3.30 with the hopes of that we don't keep staff too too long? All right? And I, I have a, a luncheon that day that'll be over by 1.30, but uh, assuming that they haven't, right? All right, so we're good with that. We're going to go with uh, 3.30 on the 3rd. Three, 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 all over the place, right? All right, next item on the agenda. Item number, item number 20, approved tentative agenda. Is there anybody who wishes to pull anything from the tentative agenda? Okay, the chair would like to add uh, to the tentative agenda, approved use of city seal by Oldsmar VFW post. Uh, so the chair will entertain a motion uh, with that as an amendment. So moved, I, I move to add that as an amendment, as an additional item. Okay, thank you. Uh, a motion by Vice Mayor, uh, seconded by Council Member Knapp. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, sensing you're ready to vote. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Council Member Soraki? Sure. Council Member <laughs> Knapp? Yes. Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Tentative agenda for June 2nd, 2020 is approved as amended, adding the Oldsmar VFW city seal use. Outstanding. All right. Um, item 21, council comments. I'm gonna start with vice mayor. Oh, goody, I get to go first this time. I don't have to say ditto, 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 ditto. Um, Okay, so um, I'll start off since we just talked about the VFW. Our ceremony is going to be this Saturday. We are going to be practicing social distancing and wearing masks and all that stuff. And three faces on the screen are going to be charter officials of our VFW auxiliary. So that is, well, yes, charter officials of the auxiliary, which is kind of cool because some future historian protege of Jerry Beaverland might, you know, put us in a book sometime that, you know, <laughs> or charter members. And so um, as of the, this time, next time that we meet, we will be an official installation as long as everybody shows up on Saturday, which I'm hoping and praying. So that's very exciting. Um, National Day of Prayer, thank you all the faith leaders. Even though it was virtual, it was still powerful and it was wonderful. So I really liked that. I wanted to give a shout out to whoever does the Old Smar Magazine because here it is, Put it, I don't know if you can see that, but anyhow, I have a new neighbor. She lives across the street. They bought their house online. They never, they've never been to Oldsmar. 
they got transferred here and um, I took her on a two hour bike ride of our trails and I brought her, you know, all over the place. And she was so excited and she wanted to know the history. And she says, oh, that magazine is just wonderful. I had to go and get an extra copy because my sister loved it. And she made me send it to her in Tennessee. <laughs> you know, So it's so cool that to show the hidden gems of our city. So thank you for that magazine um, who are, and all the work that y'all put in it. Um, Little update, I don't, I don't know if any of y'all have tried to do the free COVID testing that is available in Pinellas County. Um, I am in the prop because you can test whether you're asymptomatic or you have symptoms. Um, and so um, I have been trying since Saturday to get an appointment and it's very frustrating. I'll let y'all know at the next meeting um, how the process hopefully works out but it's calls and emails and all of that kind of stuff so it's rather frustrating and you have to have a lot of patience but I'm hoping to um, be able to get a test just to see if I am asymptomatic so I wanted to um, talk about that but my favorite and last thing that I want to talk about is um, our congressman Gus Milarakis okay you can see this this is to me I love it when we agree on things. I love it when we don't talk partisan. I love it when, when the sides get together and compromise and we get things done like we do here in the city of Oldsmar. Republican Gus Bilirakis named Florida's most bipartisan congressman. So he's first in Florida out of 27 congressmen and women. Even more exciting, he is the 32nd most bipartisan in the entire House of Representatives of 435 representatives. And it measures how often a member of Congress introduces bills that succeed in attracting co-sponsors from members of the other party and how often they, they in turn co-sponsor a bill introduced from across the aisle. So kudos Representative Bill Arrakis. You make me proud. As far as our Republicans, Mar Marco Rubio is ninth out of 100, so that's pretty good. Rick Scott's 81st out of 100, so, you know, take, take that for what you, you want it. But I just wanted to give a shout out to Gus Villarakis and his office because that's the direction that we need to go in. We all need to get, we all need to find out what we have in common. So that's it. Thank you very much, everybody, and that's it. All right, Council Member Gannon. I really um, don't have anything tonight other than to encourage everyone to please uh, consider, as discussed in the community minute tonight, uh, consider making that donation via Speedy Pro to um, purchase a sign for Memorial Day. You know, they have beautiful um, signs. They say, you know, love, honor, respect, remember fantastic way to make a silent but beautiful visual tribute this Memorial Day weekend. I would also encourage everyone, if you have a flag, fly it. If you have little flags, you know, put them in your yard, you know, and celebrate this weekend in a thoughtful and meaningful way. Um, so I just wanted to wish everybody a happy and safe Memorial Day uh, this year. Um, I'll miss seeing you all on Monday morning. Sorry, I muted there for a moment. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, let's see, Council Member Nat. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just have a few things. Um, actually, it's kind of one is kind of in response to Council Member Norris's comments. My father just recently did get the test and got his results back and was negative. Uh, he was actually pretty sick in February, so we kind of, as the virus grew and became more well known, we thought, well, it. it could have been that, but turns out it wasn't. So uh, that was good. really good news. Um, echoing council member Gannon's sentiments as far as Memorial Day, I just fixed my flagpole. So I've got the flag back out there and flying now and I encourage everybody else to do the same. Uh, and then just finally, uh, I'm sure uh, my fellow council members have been receiving, you know, a fair amount of emails from our residents with various concerns relative to everything going on right now. And I just ask them, you know, all, all our residents to, to just be patient, you know, as, as evidenced tonight by the task force, we're really getting out there um, working with 
businesses in the community to get things done, um, to move back in the right direction and, you know, kind of get things back to normal. So I just ask for a little bit more patience and I'm sure, you know, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to kind of keep chipping away and, and getting back to normal activity across the board. So um, with that, I will turn it back over to you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. All right. Council Member Siraki. Thank you, Mayor. I only have a couple things. The first thing I really want to say is, Susan, you haven't said a word all night. You've been standing there. But I want to thank you for opening up the library. Paul and I went there today and picked up some books. I couldn't believe how easy it was. We returned all our old books. And then we just drove up and they came running out. And uh, thank you for that. That means a lot to me and especially the community. The other thing I want to say is thank God the flea market's open. My watch broke. I haven't had my watch. I can go now and get it fixed. The other thing I want to just mention is I've been riding my bike through the uh, Sheffield Park. And there's a lot of activity going on over there. Uh, the teams have been practicing baseball, a lot of soccer going on. And uh, every day I ride by, there's a lot of activity. And it's just good to see the community's coming out and the kids are out playing. It's, it's just a, a good thing. Monday, Memorial Day is a very special day for me. I really am going to miss all of you. That's an, a special event for our city. I, uh, I'm really disappointed, but I, like everyone else said, please raise your flag for that special day. And uh, everyone enjoy your holiday. And thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right. I got a couple of things. Um, pop drop, you know, every, every year going on for a couple of years now, we'll do an event with pop drop every year, uh, to collect uh, items as, uh, our city clerk talked about on the community minute. Just want to remind everybody June's the month. Uh, they'll have like 40 locations that you can go and, and drop things off for Oldsmar cares. They need it a lot this year. Uh, they've done a really good job for us in the community. And then on March 27th, they'll be out at Walmart. So anybody going out to Walmart, uh, excuse me, June 27th, uh, and drop stuff off. And, and so there you go. Um, I wanted to make a point of thanking the assistant city manager for all of her extra work uh, regarding the task force. Uh, you know, we need uh, people like uh, Felicia to kind of take lead on that and help that team and a lot of good smart people uh, but she really is responsible for pulling helping Sandy and Robin pull that information together and put it in that format uh, so I want to make a point of thanking her for putting that report together uh, I think it uh, is very beneficial so I know you put a lot of extra effort into that on your own time so uh, I want to make a point of recognizing you for that uh, let's see. And of course, I want to thank the task force for all their work uh, that they put into that. Their commitment to continue to uh, help out where we need them uh, is greatly appreciated. Uh, National Day of Prayer, uh, it was different. Uh, but you know what? It was nice to have that, uh, uh, that spiritual uh, fulfillment still, even though we got it online. And uh, if, you, if you haven't seen it, it's still up. It, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely worth Saying, and I don't know about y'all, but it always makes me feel so humble when I hear about people praying for our council. You know, it just really is very humbling and, and uh, it's much appreciated. And uh, I just thank everybody who's involved in that program. So I wanted to let you all know that on Memorial Day, uh, John, uh, as you know, the chairman of our uh, Veterans Advisory Board, uh, and myself are still going to ceremonial place to reap uh, out at uh, Veterans Park. Okay, we decided to do that uh, so that while we don't have the full ceremonies going on, that tradition of honoring those who have fallen, uh, we are going to continue that by at least placing the wreath. And so uh, I wanted to let you all know that. Um, I hesitate. I'd invite everybody to come out, but I'm afraid that if we did, it would feel like, uh, you know, we didn't let the whole public come out and yet just the council did. And I don't know that that probably is a fair message to send as much as I, I was messaging with Al about it earlier, you know, but in any event, but we are going to continue to honor those 
And certainly, if you're considering it, get, uh, you know, Speedy Pro and order that. Uh, it's a nice sign, put it in your yard. Your mayor will come deliver it or a mayor's helper, one of the two, depending on how many there are the rest of this week. But uh, certainly, uh, we will be honoring all of uh, those who've given their life on Memorial Day with flags and prayer. And uh, we, we hate that we're not having that event. All right, uh, all right, so just for clarity, um, the next meeting we will do in person. If you choose not to attend and you wanna do it telephonically, uh, then what I'm, I'm gonna uh, request of you is that you definitely make sure you get together uh, with the city clerk, set up a time and, and uh, test uh, whatever equipment you're using and however we, uh, uh, we perform that so that we don't find out uh, five minutes before the meeting that there's a technical problem, all right? So, and, and we certainly will respect anybody's decision not to attend. Um, you know, we have some latitude, at least now until the seventh, um, and our next meeting is on the first. So we're good there. I won't cancel our order um, so that you have that choice. But I would like to know, and certainly the clerk needs to know that in advance. All right, and we practice it and we'll just rock and roll it. You know, when Katie was working remote, it, it seemed to work just fine. And so uh, you know, we certainly can make that work. But I, I think it's time for us uh, to get back to business. Um, do so smartly. We will, I promise you, we will save social distance there. Uh, your mayor will call you out if somebody gets too huggy feely. Just, just save that up for when this is all over, okay? And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll manage. With that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So okay. move. So move council member Gannon. I saw her going right for her, uh, her, her mute button <laughs> seconded by council member Siraki. That does not require a uh, vote. We are adjourned. Bye y'all. Thank you.